Hello and welcome to 50p Movie Club YouTube channel, the channel where I talk nonsense about movies for a little while. We do things like loot hunts, uh, reviews and various other things. And there's that royal we again, it is only me. Uh, my name's Dan and today I'm very excited to talk to you about a exciting new release that is coming out, or that has come out in fact, from a brand new boutique label based in the UK. I just want to put this out here from the word dot. This is not a sponsored video. I have spent my own money on this release. I'm just very excited about it. Now, if you're watching this, the chances are that you are into collecting movies or you have a movie collection of your own. And I'm sure many of us are familiar with boutique labels like Arrow, 101 Films, 88 Films, even Criterion. And I'd imagine that many of us that got into it late in the game have longed for the ability to be able to go back in time and get in on those boutique labels from day dot. I'm sure some of us are lucky enough to have been involved in that. I'm not. Imagine if I'd been involved, if I'd been buying 88 films from the time that they were released. Imagine how big my collection would be. So exciting. Um, unfortunately, I'm not here today to tell you that I have found out the secret to time travel. In fact, I'm just here to talk to you about a brand new boutique label that has come out in the UK called Fractured Visions. Now, Fractured Visions is what well, started life as a film festival, and they are now uh, in the business of producing boutique Blu-rays. So they've got distribution rights to various different things. And they have just released their very first limited edition boutique Blu-ray release, which I have bought, and I'm going to unbox and then I'm gonna go and watch, and then I'm gonna go and talk about it with you. So this will all be in one video, but we're gonna start with the unboxing. But before we go into that, I just wanna give a little brief overview of the kind of movie that is coming up. So the first release from Fractured Visions is a movie called Silent Action, which is directed by the Italian director, Sergio Martino. Now, he is a very famous director of what is lovingly known as giallo movies. Now giallo movies, if this is a term that you've not heard before, it's the Italian word for yellow, and it is used to describe a whole genre of movies that came out of Italy um, around the late 60s, early 70s. It's Italian cinema around that period was well known for taking genres from Hollywood and making lower budget versions of them, and actually a lot of them are really good. So if you think about spaghetti westerns, that comes from that same kind of cinema. Giallo is particularly to do with crime, really. That's where it comes from. So it's given this name of, of Giallo because the crime pulp fiction back in the day in Italy was uh, produced on, on low-grade paper but had a very um, noticeable yellow pages. So not from age, but they were sort of dyed yellow on the end. Anybody that's seen pulp fiction from that age, not the film, but the actual books, will know what I'm talking about. But it was just a very yellow color coloring. So when you held the book up like that, you, all the pages would be yellow. And that's where it gets its name from. So Jala movies are notorious for a couple of things. Um, they normally involve some kind of killer or some kind of crime spree, which is told in a way that leaves the viewer guessing. They're also normally very violent for the age. So I'm gonna talk about one of Sergio, Sergio Martini, Martino's movies that I own in a minute and talk about the relativeness of how violent that is. Um, pretty gory and normally involve some kind of nudity of attractive women, that's just the nature of it. They can be very hit or miss as to how good they are, um, but it's a very well-known genre. Um, there is a boutique label out, based out of the UK which is making, uh, which has made a sort of niche out of putting these Blu-rays out, and that's Shameless Entertainment. I'm going to show you one of those in a minute. But Fractured Visions is, is its first release. The silent action one is, is by the director Sergio Martino, as I said, and it's much more of a crime fiction. But before we talk about that, I just want to talk to you about one of Sergio Martino's other films. So he's well known for All the Colours of the Dark and The Strange Vices of Mrs. Ward, but he's also known for a film called Torso, which is this film here. Now, as you can see from this cover, it gives you an idea of what this is like. I have had this for a while, but I actually sat down to watch it the first time the other night. And I have to say, it surprised me in that it's not as gratuitous as this shows. If you can get past the inordinate amount of topless women, it's actually quite a good story. So we've got this, this is the story of a group of um, women that are terrorized. They're students at the University of Perugia 
and they're terrorized by a mask killer that slowly picks them off one by one. And it does a really good job of kind of misdirecting the viewer as to who the killer might be. There's some sort of obvious ones where you're like, well, <laughs> if it's this guy, then that's really obvious. And obviously it turns out not to be that guy. But there's some other ones and it kind of leaves you quite guessing to the end. Um, I think probably really more uh, more savvy viewers of crime and, and murder will probably be able to pick out who the who the um, the killer is from the start. But for me, had me guessing and I actually really quite enjoyed it. The gore and the violence of this is violent, probably worthy of that 18 age rating, wouldn't show it to your children, but I think anybody that sort of viewed horror films or slasher films in the last sort of 10, 20 years, even early 90s stuff, will watch this and just think, meh, it's very, the blood is very much this colour, the violence is, is shown, but also not shown, so some, quite a bit of it happens off camera, and I'm okay with that, so, yeah, this is, this is one of Sergio Martino's well-known films called Torso. If you can track down a copy of this on Shameless or you have access to, I think it, I think a lot of the Shameless ones are on Amazon Prime, recommend giving it a little watch if you, like, if you like your slashers, if you like a bit of a crime story, this one's good and it's worth watching for some of the, the views of Perugia. I'm not here to talk to you about this, even though I did a little review and I, I promised myself I wouldn't. I'm actually here to talk to you about the first release from Fractured Visions, which is Silent Action. So as you can see, this is still in its shrink wrap. I have not opened it because I'm planning on opening it right now with you guys. So this is a, as far as I know, it is a single disc Blu-ray release, but it does also have a soundtrack CD in it. So I'm gonna open it up and then we're gonna have a look at some of the features and various other things that are on this before I go and watch it. So first thing you'll notice is that it's obviously got a nice cardboard slip on it. It's not a super hard one. It's it's one of the softer slip cases, um, but it's fairly sturdy still. I'd imagine it'll get a bit of shelf damage, so maybe you want to get yourself, if you're going to pick this up, particularly as it's the first one, um, if you're going to pick this up, maybe you're going to get yourself one of those plastic protectors, which I'm, I'm, going, I'm thinking about doing. Uh, you can see the artwork on this is absolutely fantastic. So obviously we've got the two lead agents here, I think, and we're going to talk about the story in a minute, and, and the gun, and the car with the sort of blood splat and the target, really nice colour scheme. And then on the back, we've got all the special features in the synopsis. Um, I'm going to go through the special features with you in a second. I just want to draw your attention to this, which again is really nice. So that's the outer slipcase. And then inside we've got the, I'd imagine some form of original Italian artwork. Um, yellow again is predominant without being as yellow as the shameless release. Um, and obviously the Italian title, which I am not even going to attempt to read because I will butcher it. Um, and then the information on the back standard. Inside, it's quite a good, good solid case there. We've got a, we have got the two discs. Okay, so one of those, this, this one here is the soundtrack and this is the movie itself. And then there is some artwork on the inside. We can just about see the guy's face, but I'll take the discs out and show you in a second. It does come with a booklet as we're getting more and more accustomed to in terms of boutique releases. So this is a, a relatively thick one. Inside it's got an, a, an essay. So obviously a lot of reading there and it's got some lovely photos of onset action. And then it's got the transfer stuff. So Leon Talks Film will be lovely and happy about that. It's got the production credits and then it's got the track listing for the soundtrack, which is very exciting. There we go, that's the inner artwork there. So yeah, that's a really nice release. It's got a good solid case on it. I'm a big fan of both artworks. So I like this, because it's just the simplicity of it. I also like the slip case. So just to give you a quick rundown of the plot and the special features, um, the plot is basically that loads of high ranking military officials have died. It's been, uh, the cause of death has been put down as apparent suicide. Inspector Giorgio Solmi is tasked with investigating this and it's the story that unfolds around that. I'd imagine from the name that there's some action. Um, I'm looking forward to, to watching this. I like a good crime movie. In terms of special features, obviously it's a 2K restoration from the original camera negative. It's got the original Italian mono audio with newly translated English subtitles and a newly remastered English audio. It's got an audio commentary by a guy, uh, by filmmaker Mike Malloy. Um, which is all about Euro crime fandom. It's got The Age of Lead, which is about 1970s Italy, an interview with the director, which 
The one on Torso Disc is really interesting. The guy is obviously remembers stuff really well. It's got an interview with Luck Miranda, who is the lead actor. And I believe he's actually in this as well. I believe the same guy is in this. An interview with the composer, archival interview with an, an older interview with the actor as well. And there's a feature called the Milan Collection. Obviously, this is limited to 3,000. The one thing I will say about this is that the price point for this is quite high. So it was 25 pounds on release plus the postage. Lots of you will say, oh, that's too high for me. I would agree if this was something like Arrow or 101 Films or one of the more established labels. What you have to remember with this is that Fractured Visions is a brand new label. So it might be more than you'd normally be willing to pay for a limited edition, but you are getting in on the ground floor. Obviously, they will have worked out the price point for this to cover their production costs, but also looking forward to their future releases. So ordinarily, I would say it was too expensive, but for Fractured Visions, I'm saying, Go for it because this is funding new work. The more copies of this they sell, if they sell out of the 3,000 copies, the more they'll be able to produce. They've got two lined up already. Um, one which I'm very intrigued by, which was called Luz, the Flower of Evil, which is a Colombian horror film. Synopsis sounds fantastic. I'm not going to go into it in this, this one because I'm hoping that that'll be the next release and we'll be able to do it like this. But even more exciting is that they've got the license for free hand for a tough cop. This is a series of films, Italian crime films, um, which have the same... Uh, cop actor on it who is well known at Moneza I think is how you pronounce his name but he's a very famous Italian cop movie character I think he I think he may even come from the original from the original crime pulp fiction and it's directed by Umberto Len Lenzi so I am really excited about that one in particular I'm intrigued by Luz because as you know from my background my other thing that I do in, in media is, is, is um, real life ghost stories so we're always looking for horror movies to review for that but yeah I would it, it's expensive but it's the first release and essentially what you're doing is investing in that label anyway should we go and watch this because I'm I've pumped myself up now I'm really excited let's go So I have just finished watching the movie, I've finished listening to the entirety of the soundtrack, and I've watched all of the special features and read both the essays. So I feel I am in a position to impart on you how I feel about this beautiful release from Fractured Visions. I want to start with the movie. The movie itself is where I'm going to begin. We have three main characters in this movie. We have Luke Merendar's character. Inspector Solmi, who is like the lead character. He is the hero of the piece. He is the cop that is out to fight corruption and solve the crime. Um, we are kind of, this. the story sort of lineates itself around this character's arc and Luke Merendar's performance is actually really quite strong. So as I mentioned before I watched it, Luke Merendar is in Torso. I actually felt in Torso he was very wooden. I think in hindsight, having seen him in this, it's either as he's developed as an actor in the period of the two years between the two films, which is possible, or it's potentially the role that he was given in Torso, didn't really give him much scope to develop. I felt in silent action, he's actually a really good leading man. Visually, he's obviously a very good looking fella. He's got that 1970s heartthrob look about him. He acts very well facially. He's obviously quite physical and we find out in some of the special features that he did a lot of his own stunts. He's just very engaging as a character and the, the way that he has, uh, the way Inspector Solmi has been written is, is really good. There are two other sort of main-ish characters in this. Um, the first one is the DA who has a name but I can't remember what it is so I'm just going to refer to him as the DA. He's played by American actor Mel Ferreira. Mel Ferreira is a giant of a man. So if we take into account that Luke Merendar is actually quite tall as far as the rest of the cast goes, Mel Ferreira as the DA absolutely dwarfs Luke Merendar and I just can't fathom how tall he is. I think in some of the interviews it says he's nearly pushing two, two meters, which is, I guess, seven foot. Giant of a man. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure he could have had a career in WWE if he'd just been a generation younger. But yeah, his, his character is interesting. He's kind of like the authority figure. He plays it very much down the line. He kind of, you know, wants to follow all the rules, but is also kind of, antagonistic is not the right word, but kind of holds up what 
Soul Me is trying to achieve. And as the viewer, you get a little bit frustrated with him at times. You, you see that he's the, you know, this this sort of inspector character, not inspector character, this DA character. He's obviously the, the top dog when it comes to law enforcement. And you just kind of, you know, you know he's doing the right thing, keeping it by the book, but you just kind of want to let Soul Me run with it. Mel Ferreira's portrayal of this guy is okay. I wasn't completely convinced on his performance. I may just be wrong. Having listened to the special features uh, and read the essay, something about him and the way that he portrays characters, he takes this very sort of soulful, introspective outlook on their characters and tries to portray that on the film, and apparently he's very good at it. I just didn't feel for him in terms of what he was presenting on the screen. The third sort of main character is the character of Captain Spurley. Captain Spurley is played by Thomas Melian, who is apparently, according to all the special features, you know, I've learned a lot from this, a massive genre actor in Italy. He, the guy's from Cuba, had quite a sort of troubled life in general. There was lots of, you know, rumours and stuff about him not getting on with people on the set. We'll push that to one side. We're talking about him in this role. He's, the character of Captain Spurley is really interesting. Thomas Millian plays it in a really sort of understated way. Now, not in the same way that Mel... Ferreira plays the DA, but in a kind of a different way, in that you're more intrigued about what his motivations are and how he's working. Really interesting about this film in regards to these three characters is the relationship between the three of them. You see lots of Salmi going to Spurley for like counsel and for support, um, and then you kind of see him, you see Salmi's almost sort of rubbing up against the DA and like falling out with him a lot. And the dynamics is really interesting. I think it's probably the most interesting thing about the character portrayals is the way that they interact with each other in that relationship. Let's talk about the movie in the whole though. For me, this, this was a good movie. I enjoyed it. I don't think you should go into it expecting to be, you know, it's not Fellaini. It's not, it's not one of these art house movies. There's not layers and layers upon it. It has a message. It is delivering something. There's a very coherent storyline and it's very well shot, but I don't. I think you'll do yourself and this film a dis, dis justice if you go into it with your cinephile hat on. Go in it for, as someone that enjoys movies and you will enjoy it. It's just popcorn action. And you know, it's got all the key ingredients that you'd want from a crime movie. It's got car chases, it's got gunfights, it's got helicopters. Like what more could you want? It's you know there's there's enough mystery and intrigue. The story's not 100% apparent. You don't you know that something's going on, but you can't quite figure it out. It's a solid four out of five movie for me. I'm definitely going to go back and watch it again because I was watching it very much with a review hat on, and I think I'd like to watch it again in the context of just enjoying it as a movie. I can also see myself coming back to this in six months down the line when I've had a busy day at work and I just need to unwind. Just pop it on, watch some car chases. There are some really good, as I've alluded to, there are some really good action pieces in this film, for want of a better word. Um, there's a lot of foot chases, there's a lot of fist fights and gun fights and stuff like that, as you'd expect. There's also a really good car chase between um, two cars and a motorbike uh, that goes all over the place and through buildings and through windows and down roads and on a dirt track and people get shot off the vehicles and, and you know there's this whole kind of chase scenario that develops the storyline. It's really well shot. Uh, it's just a good, it's a good solid car chase where you're just like, yeah, let's go, go, go. There's also a sort of action scene where some helicopters attack a training camp and then that turns into a helicopter chase in a car. Uh, it felt very Bond-like to me in that moment. Um, and it was, again, really well shot. And a lot of that is down to Giancarlo Ferrando and the way that he sort of shot movies, which I learned from the special features. And, you know, the, the fact that he sort of was willing to put himself in situations with the camera that potentially weren't that safe, but ended up making really good shots. In terms of gore, there is not much at all. It's quite tame. You see some blood. You see some bullet holes, you see some dead people, but it's not really to the levels of torso, and even torso was tame in my mind. There is, however, one one scene, and it's the opening scene, where I was just like, wow, this has really set the tone. So the film opens when it's going through all of the high-ranking officials and their mysterious deaths. 
Uh, the first one we see, the brakes have been cut on the guy's car, loses control of it, ends up flipping his car, and there's this beautiful shot where we're, there's a tree, a really solid looking tree in the center of the screen, and the car is rolling towards, or flying towards it, actually, it's not rolling at this point, it's just flying, and you see it in slow-mo come towards the tree and then just hit the tree. And I was just like, whoa, okay, that's cool, I like that. We then see a couple of other deaths, and then we get, <laughs> We get the death of the final official before the film sort of starts. Guys that have stolen, kidnapped him have decided that his death is gonna be a suicide by rail. And we see them set him up and you know that he's on, he's unconscious, his head's on the rail and we see the train come in. I kind of naively just presumed that what we were gonna get was like the train come, blood spurt up, and then maybe cut away to a practical effect of the head, which would have shown its age. In some ways I'm thankful that didn't happen because we didn't get any practical effects that looked dated. On the other hand, a little bit disturbed about what I did see. There was no cutaway. The camera was in line with the victim uh, and then we got the train just go over the head. You saw the head fly off and blood shatter up on the screen. It was so quick and so instant that it didn't look like a practical effect. So I can only assume that they killed an, ex uh, uh, an extra in the process of making this film. In terms of the restoration, the image is, the 2K restoration of the image is good. There's still a little bit of grain. I am absolutely fine with that because I feel that when we've got a film of this age where the technology to make it pristine wouldn't have existed, I don't think it will like it's a true representation of the film. I want it cleaned up to a point where it's watchable and it looks good. But I don't mind a little bit of grain and a little bit of crackle because that's the age, that's the age of it. We're talking about a film that, you know, is like coming up to 50 years old. Like it's, it's, it's old. Like I, I want to see some age. I just, I, and, but I also want it to be watchable. And I think the restoration job on this is just at that sweet point. It's at that point where it is watchable, but you see its age. If you're watching it and you sit there going, oh, I can't really see, you know, they've, they've restored it, but not, they haven't really done much. I'd advise you to stop at that point. Go back to the menu screen, scroll to special features, go to the archive interview with Luke Merenda, and watch the footage, the original footage that is interspersed in that archive interview. Then tell me you don't think that restoration job was good. Because it is. It's very noticeable. It's way better. Similar story with the audio. Now I watched it in Italian with subtitles because I think that was the original dub. I don't know for sure. Also watched about 20 minutes of the English dub just to see what kind of job they'd done on it and the English dub is good. My advice to you would be, in terms of which one to start with, is if you don't watch a lot of subtitled films, watch the English dub. The reason I say this is because there are moments where it's quite dialogue heavy and you have to have a fairly reasonable reading speed. It's not like unreasonable, it's not unreasonable fast, but there were moments where I felt under pressure. There was no, no moments where I missed stuff, it wasn't that fast. But I just advise you to start with the English dub if you're less used to watching subtitled movies. Other than that, both dubs, sound is pristine, no crackling, sounds really good. It is a mono, but it, I didn't notice it on my TV at all. It just sounded really good to me. Next up, I want to talk about the booklet. So it's got all the usual stuff in it. It's got the lovely photos. It's got the reduced cast list. It's got the track listing to, for the CD in it. And it's got the restoration notes, all good stuff. Also included in it are two essays. The first one is written by Eugenio Araclani, the author of the second uh, essay, Francesco someone whose second name I've looked at multiple times and I just can't work out how to pronounce. The two essays are very different. They take different approaches of ways or different lenses of looking at the film really. Um, the first essay focuses on the film through the, through the sort of lens of the political situation in Italy at that time period. Um, it talks about the film, but it contextualizes it within that. That essay is very informative. I learned a lot from it. It is of a much higher academic language. It, it feels like an academic article. The second one is way more down to earth in terms of its language. I found it much more readable. 
uh, I also learned equally amount, uh, the same amount as the first essay from it. This one looks at the, the film through the lens of Mel Ferreira's role and him as a person. I learned a bit about who he was and particularly about this, this sort of the, the famed way he portrays his characters. I'd recommend you read both. It's largely dependent on what your brain capacity is like at that moment as to which one you start with, but you will learn information from both things. Next up was the soundtrack CD. I listened to the thing, the whole thing in its entirety. It has all of the tracks on the film on the CD. There are moments where you know some of the songs sound similar because the arrangements shifted slightly, but it's used for sort of different points during the film. My favourite track is actually the one that is on the menu. No, it's looping on the menu. It's a really nice addition to this package. I, I think you know so often with these old films that I sort of uncover, I sit down and I watch the film and I just think, man, this soundtrack is amazing. And then it's like a scramble through Spotify and you might find the odd track or you find some of the playlist that someone's put together. It's never quite the same thing, particularly with movies like this. The CDs don't exist anymore. I don't have a vinyl player. This is a really nice addition. I like special editions that come with soundtrack CDs because it makes my life a lot easier. Silent Action comes with the soundtrack CD. The soundtrack is awesome. Finally, I want to talk about the special features. I don't even know where to start with this. There's so much on there. It's been very well put together. We've got two, three, four interviews on there. We've got two with Luke Merenda. Uh, we've got one with Sergio Martino. And the final one is one with Luciano Michelini. All four of the inter interviews are really interesting. In terms of the two with Lu Luke Merenda, the archive one is really interesting in terms of because you see it interspersed with some footage from the original film. So from a sort of geek perspective, it's nice to see the, the unrestored version and sort of do a few comparisons scene by scene. I mean, he's also quite an engaging talker, get some sort of anecdotes from, from set and his relationships with, with other actors. And, you know, he kind of alludes to the fact that he stepped away from filmmaking a bit. Uh, the more recent one is way better done. It's been shot professionally, edited professionally. It's from the Fractured Vision guys, so that's why it's like that. In terms of information, it's, it's a different set of stories, so if you're worried about hearing the same thing, don't. They're completely different interviews. They're done in completely different circumstances. The Sergio Martino interview and the one with Luciano Michelini are both also done by the Fractured Visions guys, and you they've got the sort of editing touches, uh, the dual camera aspect of them. I like that touch. I didn't particularly enjoy the content of the Sergio Martino one. I feel like that might be because I got spoiled by the interview that was on Torso and I'd only watched that a couple of days ago. That one was way more informative. This one, not so much. He still had some good things to say and you know, I'm always keen to sort of see the directors and, and hear what they've got to say, but I, I didn't really, I didn't really take much away from this one. It's worth, it's worth a watch, particularly if you've never, if you've never seen an interview with Martino before, it's definitely worth watching. My favourite interview out of all four of them was the one with the composer, Luciano uh, Michelini. Just fascinating. Like, I can't, and this is probably because I haven't really delved into a lot of special features before, but I can't remember ever listening to or watching an interview with a film composer before, and to hear, like, how he came up in the industry, and to see the, uh, to hear about the impact Ennio Morricone had on his work, and, you know, just how the process worked with him, and, 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 what they had to go through back in the day to put the the soundtrack on the film just really found it really fascinating and and the guy himself is a really engaging speaker obviously you're reading subtitles on all of these because they're speaking in their native tongue which is fine but i just i was absolutely thoroughly engaged and could have watched hours of this guy speaking i would love to be fluent in italian i'd love to track him down and have a chat with him but just a little bit of trivia that i learned he is the guy that wrote the song that is used in Curb Your Enthusiasm as the theme song. How cool is that? I think I have to say it is my favorite special feature is the interview with the composer. There's two featurettes on there. The first one is one produced by the Fraction Vision guys. Eugenio has, uh, has done, the, done the first one, which is called Age of Lead, which is looking at the political situation in the 60s, 70s in Italy, which obviously forms the backdrop of this film. In terms of a historical documentary, this is really good. What I really liked about it is anytime they reference something, they would put it up on the screen. So you get you get you like use of posters, you get various different other things going on, you get footage from the time of all the protests and stuff like that, and it is fascinating. I knew a little bit about the history of Italy 
during the 70s, but this was a really deep dive into it. It's quite a lengthy documentary, but if you're interested in the historical circumstances behind film, um, this one is really interesting. It kind of leads you to looking at the film in a different, for a different scope, and you actually draw something else from the film other than just the story. So I definitely recommend watching it. Make the time to watch it because it's really informative and really well put together. You've got the multi-camera angles and all the editing and stuff, so it's, it's, it's worth a watch. The final documentary, uh, which is called The Milian Connection, I have no idea where they got this from. This is some kind of archive documentary. In terms of what is being said, really interesting. It's just uh, basically four four guys. It's not They're not four guys, they're important guys, but they're... They're four fanboys, essentially, of this genre movie, uh, and they're talking about why they like it and the influence it's had on them and the culture that they're involved in. Now, two of them, the, I want to say Marnetti brothers, are Italian directors, so they're modern, they're contemporary Italian directors. Uh, they work together, so obviously they're in the industry, and the other two are MCs in a rap group that may have been in one of the Marnetti brothers' movies. I don't really know the link. I found it thoroughly fascinating to hear the impact of the genre movies it had on culture, and particularly on these people. My two biggest problems with this were the sound was absolutely shocking. It was obviously done on some really budget with some really budget radio mics, and it got to the point where I got to the end and it was getting kind of grating. So that was a little bit disappointing because, again, like I said, the enthusiasm of the people being interviewed and what they were saying was really good. The other thing that I felt, and this is a much smaller little niggle, uh, it's not really a big thing, but for me, I would have liked some kind of context as to where that came from, who these guys are, you know, anything to tell me a little bit about them, because I'm not, as you heard from my intro, I'm not in any way knowledgeable about Italian cinema. So I think having the context of knowing who those brothers were, um, more than just them being directors and you know some you know some kind of reference point as to where this documentary had come from because it's not a fractured vision documentary would have been really useful for me as a nerd i'm sure loads of you will sit and watch it and go yeah, i don't i didn't need to know that it wasn't the purpose of it but i personally would have liked to know where that came from my overall feelings about silent action fractured vision in terms of the whole package this for me is a five out of five release. I'm really happy to own this. This is something that I will go back to, I will dip back into, and actually it's kind of, watching all the special features, you know, seeing a couple of films with the same actor in it has kind of made me want to go back and look at some more of these genre movies. I've seen quite a few of the spaghetti westerns and I really enjoy them, but I want to do a deeper, a deeper dive now as a result of this. So the fact that, Fractured Visions have another Italian genre movie coming out soon has really whetted my appetite. I want more of this. Yes, £25 plus postage is a little bit on the pricey side for a boutique Blu-ray. Please do not think of this just in terms of buying this package. This is an investment in a company that clearly cares about what they are producing and Although the outlay for this may not seem like value for money, if you are able to enable this company to continue putting out releases of this quality, I would consider it £25 well spent. The links for Fractured Vision are in the description below, as is the link to all my usual stuff. As always, these videos are done entirely for my own benefit and in own enjoyment, but if it turns some of you onto this, awesome like to reiterate again, even though I did at the start, this is not a paid video in any way. I've paid for this with my own money. And I have to say, I am really grateful that I did because I thoroughly enjoyed this. So until next time, I will see you soon. Bye. What is wrong with me today? That's all a mess of a thing all over the place. Blah.